Hello again, it's the Lead Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together, take a walk around a perilous topic, and uh, using uh, over-analytical techniques of examining it from every conceivable angle, we come to conclusions that are uh, healthy tips, things to put into action items, things that you can use to take on this topic yourself. My name is Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist. That other guy is... I'm Rob Stenzinger, a UX designer and game designer, a doodler at large. Hey, Jersey. Hey, Rob. We have a, we have a guest this week. And, uh, yeah, and I'm talking over you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same as when we do it in a stu- uh, live studio audience like we do with the last one, which had its audio problems, but it was so fun to actually sit next to you to do a show mm-hmm. rather than across a video screen. But uh, we got a guest this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, well, um, welcome, Ashley Knapp. Hey. Hey, I'm Ashley Knapp. Um, I am a writer and artist, though not professionally, and I'm really happy to be on the show today. That's super cool. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, from what I can see, I've seen that you're an illustrator, a game designer, and you have a lot of uh, your, your your works at uh, AshleyKnapp.com. Um, yeah, of AshleyKnapp.com. Yeah, Ashley A Nap dot com. I'll pull that up while we talk about it real quick. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right. Cool. Thank you for that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, that's 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 wild. And you even have a uh, a Twitch channel. Is that is that? Yes, I do have that? a Twitch channel. Um, that's uh, more of my living room personality than my professional personality. But if you like video games or you like to see how I'm working on stuff, it's always fun to drop in and check that out. Because it seemed like also like a bit of a creative journal where um, I, yeah. I, you have uh, um, you know quite the collection of audio booths uh, that that you you do some yeah. work on and whatnot. Um, and then when I checked out your Twitch channel, I'm like, oh wow, she's doing more of it here, just you know specifically about a game you're making. Yeah, with that, um, my brother wanted to see what game I was working on, and I realized it was like a huge hassle to package it up every single day and then have him unpack it. So I just started recording what I worked on. And it also helped cement what I was learning that day and what concepts I'd already covered. So oh, I cool. just kept working on that. So we're already talking about journaling and the and the and reflection and the benefits one derives from that, which is our topic of today. But yeah. uh, we're gonna dig in. We're gonna dig in deep into that as soon as we get to our uh, as soon as we get past our curveball. But uh, Twitch, w- could just bring this old crusty guy up to speed on Twitch. Now, Twitch, as I understand it, is a sort of like YouTube bought them recently, right? It's like a channel by which you can show videos of you playing video games. I think that's what it's primarily used for, right? Um, yeah, that's what Twitch is primarily used for. I got the idea of using it for uh, creative journaling uh, because um, there's an artist on Tumblr called Lamech, and he spends like eight hours a day broadcasting his drawings on Twitch um, because it's a really popular service also to broadcast other things like drawing or just general uh, video content because it's so it's a lot easier to use than um, some competitors' channels. So that's why I'm favoring it right now. So what what I mean, why not just do like a Google Hangout? Why why Twitch? Is it is it an audience thing? Is it like that's where like the people go to watch people do things? Um yeah, Twitch has a really big audience and following. Um on Google Hangouts, I would probably get a lot of my friends watching, but on Twitch there's just drive by viewers that just show up and you know and you can also classify it by if you do do the game streaming, what game you're doing, and they can find it through that categorization. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll pull it up on screen for those who haven't checked it out because I I've heard of it, but I've not checked it out just because every time I hear about it, it's always talking about people playing video games, which is interesting. I do like watching people play video games, but I just don't have time yeah. to devote <laughs> to that really. But uh, yeah, like right right here on the main page, it's like playing now Social Tron Live. Watch Social Tron Live's experiment of celebrities, programmers, weirdos, and puppets as we entertain the Twitch community. Tune in every day because we don't even know what's going to happen. So, is it something? I'm, I'm sorry to to, to 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 hijack this this opening no, talking about Twitch, but this is fascinating to me. So, like, is it just it's it's a live streaming service like you stream mm-hmm. like Justin TV and so on? Yeah. Huh. Um, I just find that it has a lot more viewers and a lot less ads, so that's why I like it. Ah, that does help. And uh, <laughs> do, do you notice any kind of... It's like one of the things I've been playing around with, with like, because I'd love to do streaming uh, 
Google Hangouts for when I'm working, but I just noticed that it, it really bogs my system down to do live streaming while I'm inking in Manga Studio. Uh, are you noticing any, like, th is it uh, resource intensive to use the Twitch software? I haven't played any, like, high intensity, like, 3D rendering programs or anything like that on there, but I have used it during drawing and during, like, demonstrating my own game making, and I haven't noticed any sort of resource hog, but I guess it would just depend on what your system's like. Well, maybe I just have an old an old machine. Time to upgrade. <laughs> Could be. We also should, should point out, I mean, in, in, to front end this, is for the full introduction, is Ashley is is running a Patreon. Um, yes, um... It, it's uh, it's set up now. Uh, the product won't actually start being released until... Oh, okay, so it's patreon.com, Ashley Anap. And it's for um, a book I'm going to start releasing in August, serialized, chapter-by-chapter -chapter audio format called Phony Potions, which is a fantasy book, fantasy adventure comedy. And um, I got the idea after you guys did your Patreon episode, and I was like, I'm just going to set this up and uh, see what happens. But since the book hasn't launched yet, I'm not sure how that's going to turn out yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be it'll it'll be a journey of discovery, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's phony Adventure. potion peddler's plate. Phony potion yeah. peddler's plate, which is a really interesting idea because it's about a snake oil salesman in a fantasy world. Yes, right? that's the concept. So you're living in a world where magic is real, and along comes this guy who's selling magic potions that aren't magic potions. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, there's, some, cool. uh, there's some. Thank you. It, it's like a comedy adventure, and uh, I'm really proud of it. I've been working on it since uh, Nanny Nano Rimo last November, and it's like on its fifth draft now. So it's gonna be released in August. <laughs> and this is something you, I think, you were chronicling a little bit during your audio booze that I was listening to, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So. Oh yeah. Um, if you if you're like a, a person who wants to write a novel or in the middle of writing a novel or you finish a novel and you want to laugh at someone else doing it, my audio booze are a really great resource <laughs> for listening to that and going, wow. <laughs> well, we'll so that's what it's like. We'll talk about these in more in more depth in a minute too. Yeah. And then the other reason that we asked you to be on is you are one of the people who interacted with the show in I think a very thoughtful way. Rob and I both talk about you a lot off mic about like, did you see yeah. what Ashley said about us recently? That that was really thoughtful and really good, and it really took us to task in an interesting way, in in you in know in, in a way that got us thinking really hard, right, Rob? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it uh, I got yeah I got really fired up. Um. At at uh, one of your comments, and I thought this is a uh, this is a great kind of almost reverse interviewing sort of thing. That uh, I'm like, well, wait a minute, uh, why don't we just have a conversation with Ashley at, at at some point soon? And so yeah, and here we are. Um, yeah. So and well, yeah, well I and never you... intended to take you. <laughs> Um, I never intended to take you to task, but I, I do really enjoy this show, and I, I, I like that you guys give me an opportunity to give feedback. So uh, thank you for reading my comments. <laughs> well, I think we've talked a lot on the show about how, like, critique, it, it's, it, we, an important thing for me anyway is to not mistake tone for uh, usefulness. If there's useful information in there, if there's something that makes me stop and think, like, wow, that was a really intriguing insight that makes me question and reevaluate what I'm doing or how I'm doing or, or, or like the, the results of what I'm working on, then mm -hmm. it's worth listening to. And yeah, it was it was a little bit taken as a task, but I think in the in the gentle way that we're used to. <laughs> the gentle way we deal. <laughs> But uh, but it was also but it also was pu it was pushing us to the corner, saying, "Hey guys, look at yourselves for a second and think twice about this." And it was really good. And we're, we definitely want to touch base on that later on. Uh, maybe if not on this episode, a future one. But we got to get to curveball, okay, cool. guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait so. curveball. What, what's this curveball? Curveball curve intellectual warm up exercise. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. I'm playing the I'm playing the clueless character just real quick, which is natural and and uh, helpful to you know remind everyone like okay we do we basically do a little warm up before we jump into the big topic, you know we don't want to sprain anything and it's a good uh, it's a good ergonomic yep. thing ergonomic so it's a stretch. Yep. Yes, a stretch for our for our frontal lobes. Um, so, uh, Rob, did you have one or Ashley? Let's defer to you. Did you have one that you wanted to pitch at us for this one? Oh, you guys! Your guys' curve bars are always so good. Mine would be like really silly questions, so I, I just want to see what you guys came up with. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oops. Rob, you, you got something? I was actually hoping you would, but I can. Um, I, no, I do. I do. I just wanted to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to tromp. No, all I, I, I got excited when I heard that you had one in, in progress. And I'm like, ooh, 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 you know, it's like, I, it's like you know, coming over for dinner. It's like I want to fill up. <laughs> um. So, I just got back from Las Vegas and um, from the, the American Library Association conference. I was not there to gamble, uh, and. It was 110 degrees or 108 degrees, and you know it was very it, physically taxing to be in that kind of heat. It was physically taxing to be at such a huge convention for five days. Um, it was a lot of fun, spending a lot of time with friends, and and I mean like going from around the clock, like you know nine o'clock in the morning till one o'clock in the morning every day doing stuff, not having much time for downtime. And I get home, and I crash. You know, I just I got home and I went right to ground. You know, slept for like a whole day because it's like just, and I'm still, I'm still feeling like I'm only running at like 70% capacity. I'm not sick, but I'm just feeling really worn out. So as I finish this, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I've got more traveling ahead of me this fall uh, with the new book coming out, with the Warner Commission report coming out. And if that takes off and if it does well, there's probably more travel in my future. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to have the luxury of crashing every time I fly someplace. So I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts on or things that you do to maintain your energy to because this is an on-demand uh, line of work. This you know it's being creative on demand on command, and you don't get to say to a client. Hey, look, dude, I wasn't feeling it. I had jet lag and blah, blah, blah. No, you just got to crank out the work because people waiting for the work. So I'm curious if you guys um, – and Ashley, I know you have just finished school recently. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a very high stress, very emotionally, <laughs> physically taxing experience. I was there. My wife was, I saw my wife go through it. I, I watched her almost literally turn gray when she was going through grad school. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so – like what? Do you, you guys have any like, go-to strategies to like recuperate quickly, to turn it, or to prevent the crash um, when traveling? You, yeah, go ahead. Do you mean uh, primarily the physical or the creative crash? Both, hopefully. <laughs> well, <laughs> for the physical, um, I don't know about you guys, but I find like a three-minute nap does a lot more good than trying to keep working for thirty minutes. Um, I find that really effective, like the the super short naps. For the really, like what about minutes? what do you think, Rob? Yeah, uh, those are. I've, this is gonna sound like hearsay because I don't have the study names on hand, but I've read that like the most effective naps are like two minutes, three minutes, you know, or or under twenty at least, because they don't let you enter the REM cycle, but they let you rest. Like, do do you actually feel refreshed when you do that, or do, is it just like enough to keep you going? Um, if you've gotten, like, an adequate amount of sleep, then it'll definitely keep you feeling refreshed. That's how I've experienced it, at least. Hmm. Yeah. I've, <laughs> He's I've very skeptical that. looking at me. <laughs> no, it, um, I've actually found that to, to work, where, um, like, really, sh like, doing some kind of short naps, not typically, I haven't practiced at, the, like, the just a few minutes, but, like, it's, um... Yeah, I'm not going to be quoting uh, great research either, but it's almost like there's a there's a little bit of a chemical reset. I feel I feel mm -hmm. different after a short nap. And, yeah, uh, like rebooting. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like I've stopped fighting a a draining feeling, and at least I'm reset <laughs> to neutral. So I think yeah, short yep. naps is, that's a really good idea. Um. But I, I mean, I do think, as Ashley was pointing out, that there's probably multiple dimensions to consider. Um, you know, the uh, physically tired, you know, mentally drained, uh, creatively drained, because uh, there's and and also um, to me, it's very different depending on uh, which phase of creativity you're ready for or not ready for. What do so you mean? if you're are, are you ready to uh, be in a generative mode, or are you are you ready to integrate ideas? and piece together things that already you've set forth for yourself? Or are you ready to refine ideas and, and call? Um, or are you ready to sort of put the finishing touches on and ship something? And I think, oh, those are, yeah. yeah, totally different. You're I don't right. even know. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Like, when, when I was on the plane ride home, 
and I just posted this to Instagram. I posted like a little Boulder and Fleet doodle that I did on the plane right home. I had the intellectual wherewithal to do a drawing of my two characters sitting around a campfire. What I wanted to do, because I spent all this time around all these like terrific creative people who are doing all this really interesting stuff and just you know feeling really inspired and just lit on fire. They're like, I want to do more of my personal work. I know I don't have time for it, but I got to make the time. And so I'm on the plane. I'm like, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write an outline now. I'm gonna finish this outline that I started months ago. And then I sit there with my you know uh, papyrus app open on my tablet. I'm like, Bwah. I can't think. <laughs> you know, there's no there's no cycles burning for that. But I can doodle. That I was able to pull off. I can I can do a reasonable job of penciling, inking, and coloring right now. That that I had the capacity for, but not sitting down to write. So mm -hmm. I guess it depends on which. Yeah, yeah. I find that the the generative stage of being creative is heavily dependent on how my mood is and how I'm physically doing. Like I can't do generative stuff while exhausted. I can do like painting from observation or coloring or inking or any of that stuff, but the generative stuff, no, I've got to be in the... What do you find, Rob? Um, well, and that's um, being mindful of those different um, states and like what kind of output do I could I do at the moment, then I'll be opportunistic about what project is on my list and I'll pick the one that fits the mode I'm in. And uh, and I'll be watchful because um, yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of side gigs for many years and so I've, I've I know what I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, no way, I, I <laughs> tend to be okay at noticing if I'm not effective at a given thing. Like if I'm just holding down the space bar and pushing <laughs> the TV across the screen. I, I, I will notice that, actually. <laughs> and yeah. Even if I'm pretty tired. And then I'll be like, oh. So it's a good indicator. I really shouldn't be coding right now or whatever, yeah. And I'll switch so, gears. In other words, like before, like before, something I should put on my Trello boards before I go on trips is have some pencils ready. Mm -hmm. Have some pencils ready for inking and coloring because that's all you're going to be able to work on while you're on the road kind of thing and make time for the generative stuff between trips because it's not going to happen on the trip. You're going to be inspired, you're going to want to do it, but you just won't have the, the, the cycles to do it. That um, sounds like a pretty reasonable solution. Hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's like packing your Sudoku puzzles or whatever. Um, you're just yeah. pick, picking the right thing to bring with. That, that's uh, Yeah, that's, I like that. I was also okay. observing the Rob Stenzinger model of uh, letting a lot of content wash over me while I was there. So I was like, you know, drinking in a lot of podcasts and a lot of like audiobooks that I've been meaning to get in touch with and not trying to be too attentive to them. Not being like, all right, time to study. Time to sit. I'm going to knuckle <laughs> down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cram for this test kind of attitude. It was more like, let's just let this stuff wash over me and whatever needs to sink in will sink in because I'm too tired to really give my full attention to this thing. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do that with uh, second or third listens on audiobooks as well. But, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, like a little radiant heater of, of useful information. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cozy. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think we walked around that one, and I think that that was a good warm-up, don't you? And especially with ending with that metaphor. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Let's dive into our main topic. All right. So time to go 10,000 feet up. Examining the topic in abstract, looking at it from every conceivable angle, looking for the hidden depths and surprises within, talking about something uh, that is a challenge for visual storytellers of all stripes. And we're revisiting a topic, but I think we're revisiting it more head-on than we have in the past. Um, reflection and journaling. We've talked about this a lot in the show, Rob. It's been a recurring theme, but I don't feel like we've really sort of like said, okay, this one is all about journaling and reflection, right? I agree. I think uh, one could argue maybe somewhere in the around episode 30-ish or whatever, but like I don't, I don't, not really head on. It's it's just been thematic. We're like, oh, we we we're doing this podcast, we're doing extra lean, and then these have by. And we'll talk about sort of the benefits that we gain from it and the kinds of things and like why we explore it, how we explore it, 
and title it as a form of journaling, but we're not really talking about it in specifics as a focal point. And the the reason that this one grabbed us as a poten potential topic is because when we said like we need to get Ashley on the show is that one of the things as we were like talking about you Ashley behind your back was uh, <laughs> like like one of the things that you exemplify that I, I think we both really like uh, the thing that you exemplify that we admire is the fact that you do so much journaling and reflection and then B you share it with everybody you make it available to whoever wants to consume it. Um, and so I've been following your audio booze since probably middle of last year, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it's been fun just to drop in on you and, and just listen in on what you've been struggling with. And sometimes it's sometimes it's like really deep and heavy. Other times it'll be like, I think it was like, was it your roommate or your boyfriend who was interrupting you throughout the whole thing? And like just <laughs> yeah. crazy, would not let you finish. The, 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 the freak, it was only five minutes. Just let her finish. But he was <laughs> he just kept messing with you uh, while you're trying to finish the darn thing. So sometimes they were very playful and yeah. fun, but, but uh, in, in any case, it was it was cool. It was a neat way to sort of like listen in on the creative process, both the highs and the lows, and the silly and the intense. And uh, and you know, one of the things that we've talked about a lot is you know, there's there's even if you don't share this stuff, there's benefits to doing it. So I wonder if that's where we should start, Rob, with this whole why. Well, let's let's start by defining what we mean by journaling, Rob. What do we mean by journaling? Uh, I, what's funny is I think there's something thematic. This so I've had, this happens a lot, right? Obviously, we're we're sort of on a track when we start this, and then our curveball ends up feeding into it a little bit. Yeah. But I think I think you mentioned um, sort of just you know different. What, what we we're talking about the different modes, and then like you you mentioned like the information washing over over you. And if you sort of flip that on its head, and you just think about sort of free writing, which is sort of like the just getting it out of you, right? Um, version of that sort of just being present within with with whatever is, is you know you're you're involved in or, or experiencing and uh, the uh, the journaling can just be a get it out of you thing yet also I think there's a reflection aspect that I think is worth examining as well because the reflection is trying to gain extra insight and you're trying to somehow um, either in a in a structured way interview yourself and then later on, that's like a time capsule to look back at and to, to interview yourself again and to, to sort of use those as waypoints and, and then you can sort of explore the difference between them and whatever. And even though it's not perfect, I mean, it's full of cognitive biases, right? Um, <laughs> you know, I can, I, you know so I, I could be journaling every day, but then maybe I'm just journaling, yay, I'm awesome. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, high fives for me. Smile, smile. Rob smile. did it again. <laughs> July exactly. 6, 2014. <laughs> July 7, 2014. I just keep doing it. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's which I don't know. I mean that, but that would be some kind of encouraging journal where you're just saying, um, "Gosh, gosh it's, I'm uh, I'm going. I'm not framing it up. I'm going kind of going all over the place." But now you reminded me of something else. <laughs> There's this thing uh, by Jane McGonigal uh, and I, uh, a company she's involved with consulting or something called uh, Super Better. And um, Super Better is sort of like a, a gameful way to explore healthy habits. And, um, and it's, it, its initial intent, I think, was to help people who are recovering from medical things. And this is also helpful for maybe you're not recovering from something, but maybe you're just kind of bummed out or you're kind of blasé or bo bored with what you're doing or whatever. And it kind of shakes things up where, like, you can do this that encouraging kind of journaling. I was, like, partially being facetious, but then again, like, one of the tasks in Super Better that I, was on one of my missions was to um, essentially do that sort of journaling but, like, have it sent back to, my, sent back to me from uh, this... This app that basically basically uh, um, messages you in the in the, from you know where you can schedule um, iOS alerts for the future. Anyway, and I, and it was just encouraging stuff like tell yourself why you're so awesome. Basically, anyway, so I don't that it, that was fun actually. So there, I I would say even that kind of journaling, whatever you're getting out, you're 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 establishing some. Um, message for yourself. 
Well, in, in another uh, aspect of this too, this journaling, this journaling can be something you write down. It could be something that you record in audio. It could be something where it's written in a private private notebook. It could be something you put on like a live journal account, uh, an Evernote list. It's just capturing thoughts about either before or after something happened. Because another thing, I, I forget what documentary I was watching, but it was something about uh, there was a part of the documentary about the power of the, the positive benefits of journaling um, when in, about when you're about to engage in stressful endeavors, like about to, you're about to do a public speech and you're nervous about it, and just journaling the feelings you have at that moment concretizes them, freezes them in stone, makes them a manageable thing. And they found there's a study, and oh, I wish I could look up the, the study just offhand or remember it offhand. Maybe I can look it up for the show notes. But um, people performed better by uh, overall when journaling just for five minutes before engaging in any activity because they were concretizing all of that messy emotional stuff in the back of their head that was making them feel all tweaked up and amped up before going out to do the thing, right? And it, intuitively, it feels like that should make sense, right? Because you are yeah. sort of pre-wrestling with the demon and, and giving it a face before going out to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, we, definitely. It makes it it makes it part of your world instead of this abstract emotional spiritual world in your head. Like you're just like, oh, okay, this is really all that's going to happen. And I think that definitely helps you with stressful situations, even if it is actually really bad news or whatever. Right, right. It's it, it's I should say it's not necessarily always like a, you know end of the Karate Kid movie victory. Sometimes yeah. it's just it's simply coping with the situation, mm -hmm. but. But dealing with it at high capacity, or at a, at a higher capacity than what you normally could. So we're kind of going through, like, what are the benefits? What do we gain from these things? We gain, like, what? We gain, like, better a sense of control or a, a feeling of control over ourselves in engaging with the situation? That's Rob? I think that's that's very true. Like, these are benefits, but also they're tools. There's, there's, there's this intermingling of them. Because, in, be, because you, by capturing it, you have now a asset, a thing that you can then start to um, incrementally build upon or not, either way. You can just you know, get something out on paper, but then uh, it's now a tool that you could possibly use for, for something else where maybe you're looking for trends in like, um, well, how do I feel over the course of a month or a year or even um, a couple days? And then you could see like, that you have that chance to gain insights because of that tool. It's not just an expression. Like, that may help you in the moment or for some short duration after that action, but then it can, has the, this other potential next, next benefit where I think it becomes this, this utility. Mm -hmm. Is that what I you do? Go ahead, Ashley. Um, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think that uh, being able to spot trends is the advantage of doing a semi-regular journal opposed to just doing a journal when you're really affected by a strong experience. Or when you have like a really, like the yay journal, like if you only do a journal when you feel like you had a really, really good day, um, that can be good, but it won't help you spot trends like Rob was saying, which can really help you figure out how you're most productive. Is that why you started doing the audio booze? Was it that explicit with you, or was it more like, let's do this thing and find out what I discover? Um, I started doing the audio booze to kind of keep me honest, like, um, about working on my writing and my art, because at the end of the day, although I don't do them every day, some days when I don't do them, I have to sit there and confront the fact, I'm like, okay, I didn't get what I wanted to get done, and what did I do instead? And I have to... Um, deal with and accept that information while if I wasn't journaling every day and I didn't expect to journal every day, I might let that information um, become diminished or forget about it in some ways. So it was sort of like a contract you were making with uh, a, a imaginary audience. Yeah. Right? And the audience is, I mean, I'm saying when you start out because you don't have the audience for the audio booths before you start them. You've got the audience yeah. now. But it's a contract you're making with them saying, like, if I do this publicly, then there's, like, this sort of contract I'm obliged to, you know, uh, fulfill. Yeah, it's, like, the same effect of doing your weekly webcomic or whatever to practice drawing. Huh. And, but, but 
by mm-hmm. doing it, do you ever go back and review them to look for those those trends and patterns like you were saying? Or is it something that you sort of like feel out like just through the process of doing them and through the remembering past ones? Um, I sort of feel it out through the process of doing it. And also, like, uh, my friends and relatives will call me on stuff. Like, they're like, hmm, I thought you were working on this, but last night in your boo, you said, I heard you mention this in two weeks, so what's going on there? So, uh... Uh, I will say, like, once or twice a year, I will go through and listen to ones from, like, three months ago to see where I was, but uh, not too frequently, no. Okay. So semi-regularly reviewing, but not on a regular basis reviewing, right? Yes. Uh, okay, but something we have in the notes that I, th- I think is worth touching on briefly before we go on the ground, is what's the difference between journaling, reflecting, capturing data? Rob, this is a really good question you put on there. Is what, what, what are, What's the difference between simply observing what we're doing, reflecting on what we're doing, and just okay. capturing data on what we're doing or what we're, like story ideas, what we're thinking about? Is there a way to like define those different qualities so that we're not just saying, write down everything that's happening to you and it'll just magically <laughs> make your life better? There was a dog once. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that those could be footholds for d- different distinctions, and I think anyone could come up with their own distinctions. Um, do you want me to take a swing at what I was thinking of? Yes, please. Um, so I think one would, let's see, so the, um, what's funny is I'm looking at the notes and I can't even find the question. So, like, one of them had to do with, like, framing up, um, like, the unemotional statements of time. Like, I did this from this time to this time. I ate this. They're like facts, more or less, right? Mm-hmm. And then there are, then there's like the narrative of like, okay, I showed up and at, you know, at the bus stop and, it, you know, boom, it started to rain. And I was like, what? This is, I've, I felt terrible, but then I was reminded because of the smell. Like, all of a sudden, you're, like, going through some narrative. And, and then it's like, and that's how I figured out, um, I don't know, I wanted to write a shoe poem. And then, um, then let's see, then the other one is more, uh, like, the, uh, the, instead of telling, like, a general narrative, it's like there's a need. Like, kind of like what, what Ashley said, where you, um, you're, 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 you, I, I can't remember how you phrased it, but basically to get that emotional event out, right? Um, and actually, yeah, you characterized that as well, Jersey, where you're just... Um, it, it, I think there's, there, there are different reasons to, to do that, that journaling, and um, maybe those are some general categories that might be of use. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, uh, like okay. Then on the ground, I'll try to remember some other things that I that I've done that that that's part of how I ended up thinking like this is different than journaling, and I think, but it's kind of like it, and uh, yeah, like it's more data based or what have you. Well, yeah, that was that was one of the things you said at the top of this episode too, is that that uh, and as you put it in the notes, reflection is prone to our own filters and biases. Right. So you posed an interesting question. Wouldn't it be more useful useful to perform specific research? I want to dig into that. Is that where we're going to save that for on the ground? Uh, well, no, well, that one's it's. Well, it's funny. It's either way. It's what's funny is like it, you're capturing it. It's almost like that. Just in general, the act of writing ends up throwing your your worldviews and biases in with it because you've put it. You've got it out of you. It's expressed, for better or for worse. You're the, the things you don't know and the things you know or under assume and feel strong about it all shows up and that's an asset because now you've got a thing you you didn't have a thing and you just had assumptions and they're just floaty soft ideas but once you well, have Well and that's what makes your work original too right that's something we've di- punched at a whole bunch of times on the show is that your assumptions worldview and your biases are what bring the original spark to the work in the first place so it's not always bad to have biases <laughs> right i was characterizing it where it may have sounded bad but no it uh, <laughs> like i was try so i was saying that it may sound so bad like like oh gosh what could possibly be a value in it but that document, like making it exist outside of you, now you have a chance to gain insights because it's a thing that you can observe. 
Very and cool. I think that um, when you make a document outside of yourself, um, even if you don't share it, if you can go back and read it while you're in different emotional states, you can get different opinions, your own opinions, different opinions on it, because your emotional states control so much of what you're thinking at any one moment to go in there. You're almost a different person when you look at it again. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I had this saved up, and I didn't know if there was going to be a place to bring this into the discussion. So, as I said, I was just in Las Vegas last week, and um, <laughs> not not my element, as it turns out. Uh, the, the Vegas Strip is not a place where, where I felt completely at ease and at home and, and relaxed and, and uninhibited. Um, and, so, and, and I made the mistake of walking down the Strip. And as I'm walking down the strip, I'm just feeling more anxiety and anger and frustration and just discomfort. Mm -hmm. And as I'm as I'm having this like Im like visceral emotional reaction to that environment, people baby strollers with like a long like cigarette hanging out of their mouth. I'm like, wow, really? Uh, but uh, <laughs> but as, as as I'm walking down the street, like I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, what would Rob, how what would Rob say to me right now? Because I'm dealing with this, right? How, how would Rob talk me down? And I felt my, my, my body like just rebelling against the idea. Like, no, I get to be mad about this. I get to be angry at that this exists. You know? But I knew, I knew intellectually, A, that it was going to end eventually. I was going to be away from that place at some point in time in the near future. That didn't stop the anger. And B, I knew that upon reflection, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, like, okay, I was, I'm kind of overreacting. This does make people... And I'm, I'm saying this to myself. I'm hearing Rob's voice in my head saying, like, look... There is a value for a certain yeah. kind of entertainment that makes certain people happy, and if they're getting some kind of value, and if the value exchange is honest and open and nobody's being deceived, then... Right, right? Yeah, Ashley knows what I'm talking about. You, you can hear that Rob <laughs> voice sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I'm, like, I'm still so angry about it. And so then, like, But then, yeah, when I got back and I looked, I looked at the story and said, okay, this is the thing that happened, this is the way I was reacting to it, and I could see that... Yeah, I'm a different person in this state when I'm comfortable and I'm relaxed and I can deal with this like on my own time and own terms. Um, and, and believe it or not, there's not there's a there's fodder in there for storytelling someday, and b there's something a little revelatory about what my limits are and uh, where my comfort zone lies and when I turn from ex accepting gentle person to completely judgmental prick. <laughs> Right, I found where that line in the sand is. <laughs> I mean, like, that might be an uncomfortable feeling, but it's kind of, like, if you never experience that, that means you're not doing enough, so that, right. that's also an interesting thing to happen. <laughs> it was definitely interesting. It wasn't comfortable, but it was, it was interesting, and often the interesting things aren't very comfortable, right? Yeah. <sighs> Okay, so are we ready to go on the ground, Rob, or did you have anything to to, to button up this section? No, I, I think uh, th I think that was a good exploration. I think there's a lot of lot of reasons why, and um, you know, a lot of lot of potential benefits. And <laughs> so, like, why not why not explore, you know, how the some different approaches we've taken? All right, well then it's time <laughs> to go on the ground to take all of this. Heavy philosophical thinking and massage it, sculpt it, uh, monkey face it. Is that what they call it when you push the dough? You make monkey face when you're kneading dough. I'm not sure. You knead it into something useful, something, some, some kind of takeaway, some kind of action item. So tips and tricks on journaling. So if somebody's like, okay, well, this sounds like something I could potentially do is make time for this in my life. Um... Why, why Audioboo and not something else, Ashley? What, what, what's so great about Audioboo? It's an old service. Ashley, you still there? Oh, did we lose her? Maybe. Ah, oh, we might have. Well, we go through some of yours while Ashley comes back. Yeah. Um, oh, you got this. You got an interesting thing at the top of this section, Rob. I, I was hoping we could talk about this real quick. Yeah, sure. So... One thing that, and I th this was starting to come up, I think, in the um, you know 10,000 feet up section, is the sort of uh, the self-interviewing. And it's a way to add, this is like a hybrid of, uh, yeah, it's going to be full of your biases, but you're, you have a chance to ask yourself a consistent question, and you could do it on a repeating basis. Um, let's see, there's, uh, like, you could, you could um, I was playing around with an app, and, oh, it's killing me that I did not put it in the show notes. Um, 
but it's essentially it was created by a person who got super Sorry. into the <laughs> self. Oh, hey. oh, we got you back, Ashley. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, I was just talking about there's Sorry. an app. I, no problem. Um, yep, technical things that they totally happen. Podcasting, it's part of the adventure. Um, but this app was was by someone who um, just wanted to get a lot of data. And what what would that be like in the, in their life? And they they did some self interviewing and they did a lot of the whole self quantified movement type things. And uh, um, but they also released this app, which I will look up and add to the show notes. But basically, it's like you can ask yourself different questions and it'll prompt you at diff different times and just keep asking you things, almost like <clears throat> the researchers did who um, helped perf perform the the um, the research that Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi used for his book that became Flow, um, where they would call people back in the day with pagers, and they would say, "All right," they would page a, a tennis player and be like, "Okay, how are you feeling right now? What, how were you?" And then you know, gather their research by asking some consistent questions uh, on a recurring basis. And you know, why not do that for yourself? One technique that uh, I that I thought, you know what, I really would like to do this because I want to get better at reframing and, uh, well, basically gratitude journaling. Um, in, in, in part, it was because I heard this specific thing mentioned multiple times, and I thought, it's a simple question. Uh, let, me, let me try to name as many things, or, or at, at least five things that uh, I feel gratitude for right now. And um, I noted... I, uh, some some places I heard that from are the book uh, Reality Reality is Broken by Jane McGonigal, uh, the book Fifty Nine Seconds, and I can't remember the author of that, and uh, Daring Greatly by uh, Brene Brown. So, um, just and each of them presenting research to say like, well, um, this has been a technique for for just you know having a very positive uh, outlook. And living longer, happier, healthier lives, kind of thing. I've seen people doing this on like social media. They'll they'll have like daily gratitudes. Like the, here's like the the things I'm grat grateful for this morning, and and it'll often be very haiku like. It'll be like early morning rain, toast with my children, uh, you know, warm <laughs> socks or something like that. Right? Is, is that the kind of thing that they're talking about? Uh, yeah. I mean, anything you feel gratitude for, and I think it can come off a little bit. Um, uh, you know, motivational posterish, um, yeah. which can have some, you know, um, not all positive, uh, uh, you know, impressions. Because some of that, some some of those, the motivational posters can seem pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fake because they're they're hanging up in places where people aren't necessarily living up to what they say, yet. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not b too bothered by that similarity because uh, right. it, it looks different when you're writing your own thing down. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, I discovered gratitude journaling from a different source. Hmm. And uh, like I, when I first started doing it, um, I was had like three bullet points hmm. in my personal uh, anecdotal evidence that after doing gratitude journaling for two years, I have a lot more to be grateful for, which helps improve my mood a lot and makes me more productive and creative. Um, it's just once you start doing it, you start looking out for the things that you actually appreciate, not the things you think that you appreciate, like, if that makes any sense. Oh my god, this is the analytic I think, isn't it? Isn't it just like, yeah. it's like a, a different uh, use case for being attentive to the kind of things that are useful to your storytelling. Like whenever I emotionally react to a thing, I'm watching in a movie, you're reading in a book, I stop and I go, why do I feel that way? What did they do? And I use yeah. the, 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 the use case I always propose is that, well, you're, you're unboxing what, you're, or uh, reverse engineering what other creative people are doing to make you emotionally react, which will give you more tools to make other people emotionally react to the stories you create. But what this is, you're, you're pointing out is, it also it, it, and, and the thing is like we've talked about in the show both on like extra lean and lean tired is that eventually it gets to a point where it gets really hard for you to disengage from that and yeah. you're always whenever you're watching anything you're kind of watching it both as the watcher but then also as the person watching for like how the magic trick is made 
um, because you get attuned to it. But so by, yeah, gratitude journaling can also make you more attentive to the things that give you a positive feedback loop, right? Yep. Totally. It's like instead of being like, ooh, I'm going to take that character motivation, you're like, oh, hey, this just made me smile, and it didn't cost a lot of money, and this and that and the other thing, you know, which is a good thing to be aware of in your own life. Actually, I'm reminded of that that big kerfuffle that popped up over that Facebook thing where they were doing that uh, experiment with the feeds, right? Oh, yeah. That's a... yeah, yeah, I need to learn more about that. <laughs> um, I need to learn more. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, since you mentioned it, it's uh, it's uh, the, the the situation in general is, and which I'm sure everyone's heard about it right now. Now I'm sure most people don't block the news out as much as I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I block it out. <laughs> well, right, rock on. And uh, but, I mean, I pick up on it, you know, plenty or what have you. But uh, yeah, through you know, whatever social media sources, sources and whatnot that are less whatever, um, more to my taste. But um, the idea is that that Facebook was doing some honestly it's really close to the to the UX user experience discipline right where they're making changes to the information that people see and trying to understand what effect that has there's a lot of controversy as far as choosing to do that in the first place um, number one how they framed it up in their in their research number two because they kinda took a big victory lap and a lot of people are questioning like well wait a minute you didn't really kind of do what you said you tried to do, but this is still weird anyway. So like, there's kind of like a few layers just in my casual observation that seems to be present in that topic. But um, uh, as far as uh, I think it relates to this. I mean, it's like well, the more you you capture this kind of thing, the more of a resource you have to to manipulate your own emotions. Just like Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody's going to be manipulating your emotions, it might as well be you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, as far as... Uh, that, so it, the questions fill in the blank with other options. It doesn't have to be gratitude journaling. It could be... Um, like I'm also... Uh, I was... Let's see. Uh, who have I helped today is a question that I'll um, visit sometimes. Um, what have I done... Uh, for my health and fitness today. Mm. Another question. So, how about you guys? Um, we're on, we're on the ground right now, right? Is it too soon for uh, suggestions or no? No, please, please make All no right. suggestions. Um, I was thinking uh, one of the things that when I first started doing it, um, I put everything into like one big book. <laughs> like I had my to-do list on the back page and my gratitude journal on the front page, and then it was a huge mess. And the problem is like I would get to the to-do list and feel productive, get to the gratitude journal, and then when I went back to reread it, if I didn't accomplish whatever goals I had at that period in time, I'd feel um, embarrassed or as if I had made a mistake. So over time, as I did this journaling, I separated it into different domains, and depending on what kind of person you are, you might find one of these more useful than the other. Um, like for to-do lists, I tried a bunch of different services, and I settled on this thing called, uh, they have an iOS-like um, version of it, but it's called Habit RPG. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. already we're both intrigued. It's this, uh, it started out as a browser-based game. I got a Kickstarter, now it has an app. And basically, you started out as a level one classless character, a little sprite, and you can make to-do lists, dailies, um, and habits. And basically, when you do your habit, you 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 hit that you did it, and you gain experience or gold. And when you fail to do a daily or you do a bad habit, you lose health, and you can take on different classes like warrior and cleric, and join parties of people that are like similar habit things like fitness or art or writing. And there's guilds and a tavern, which I am checked into right now because I'm actually on vacation, where you don't have to worry about your dailies. So it's actually a very cool um, incentivizer if you want to find a way to gamify your... Uh, or wait, gameful intent, that's what you like, uh, for, <laughs> for your to-do lists and, and habits, which I found was the one I've stuck with the longest. So that one's good for... Oh, we lose her again. Oh, lost her one more time. Plus type um, stuff. No, oh, there she is. Uh oh, just lost yeah. Ashley for a second, but she's back. Uh, already looked it up. 
have an RPG, RPG. We were showing it on the screen while you were talking. <laughs> now I gotta see if there's an Android app. Oh yeah, if I see it. Um, I also uh, found. I yes, there is an Android app. app. Sweet. Hmm. So super. This reminds me a lot of Super yeah, Better as well. Super there's convenient. some similar territory. With, yeah. Uh, with yeah, these different I thought apps. That we were uh, it. Yeah. This uh, the the app I was forgetting about before is called uh, just Reporter, and it's only for iOS. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's 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 pretty neat as far as uh, you can have it ask you anything you want. Like, what are you working on? And for me, I ask you know, who, you know what are you what are you grateful for right now? Who have you helped? All that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, or where are you at? And why are you there? It, you, know, you can do all sorts of things with it, but uh, but that's like a that's not as that's not as uh, um, gamefully designed. It's it's nice and elegant, um, a, a way to sort of do your own custom interview. But uh, this RPG habit RPG sounds like I gotta check it out. Um, which so, okay. yeah, reporter is a new application for understanding the things you care about with a few randomly timed surveys each day. Is that what you're talking about, Rob? Yes. Yeah, okay, I got it pulled up so we can see where it is. Reporter-app.com. And HabitRPG is at HabitRPG.com. That's easy mm -hmm. enough. That's cool. And it does look like that's on Android, which is nice. Yep, I just, I just downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, God, I have to check this out. This is uh, fascinating. Um, so funny. I did not anticipate talking about the the sort of intersection with journaling and task things as much, but but it's um, part of it though, isn't it? I mean, it really is. Like when you're talking about journaling, you're talking about what were your goals for the day and what were the outcomes of the day, right? Yeah. And how do you feel about that? Um, that's that's a very good point. It's like this extra, it's this richer layering of data to to be tracking those tasks and uh, embed them in a, in a in a bigger context almost. Yeah. I mean, you had on the list here the Emergent Task Planner, which we've extolled the virtues of many times. And like part of that is I'm setting my goals for the day, and then I'm tracking what happens during the day. And, and I rarely capture how I feel about those things as they happen. But when I'm doing it, it what, I'm, what, I'm, what I learn about myself is like what I can do, how long things take. And I learn that, yeah, I may have – every day I started out with five things I want to do, but I only got three because at <laughs> – at various points in the day, something comes in to say, hello, you didn't expect me. I'm here to disrupt your day and make you cry. Um, <laughs> Life. <laughs> but yes, I, uh, so now that Ashley's back, I did download just now um, Habit RPG. I'm totally going to get this thing going as soon as I get off of this call. That is awesome. Uh, okay, but but while while we got you back, Ashley, something I've been meaning to ask you since we got into onto the ground is, um, why did you choose Audioboo over other services for like just journaling? Like, why not use SoundCloud? Why not use uh, you know, like just you know, an MP3 recorder on your phone and just upload it to something like YouTube or something? Oh, <laughs> she's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's it, it's the question, isn't it? It's like she's like, oh, I'm not the, question. the question is a high bandwidth one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. So, um, let's see. The oh, gosh, I'm super intrigued about because Ashley has really utilized that service um, to you know, very deeply. I I dabbled in it. And I noticed. I mean, you. you I did too. To, yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is like the the reason I was so surprised by it is that it's an old service by internet standards. I mean, I remember using Audioboo, gosh, I want to say in like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. But like that's like going on five years old. I was surprised it was still around when I went to go. Like when I saw Ashley was doing it, I was like, well, I must, did they still even have an app? And sure enough, yeah. That is funny. Um. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm yeah, I'm pulling them up. Uh, history, like yeah, okay, they started in 2009, so yeah, you were you're right in there, and uh, yeah, interesting. It's uh, it's really weird for for an internet company. There's just not like you check out its Wikipedia page, and it's not some large uh, 
expansive, you know, oh, this round and that round of funding and all these different, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It's like, it's around and here's a few people that use it. There's Ashley. She's back. <laughs> I moved spots, so maybe the Wi-Fi will work better now. <laughs> ah. Well, we were just, we were actually vamping up for um, your return, talking about, like, Audioboo as a service. Because, like, the question I had for you is, like, why did you choose that over other newer services um, for your journaling? Um, well, part of the reason I chose it is just because it was so easy to sign up and the app made recording, like, so simple. Um, I've actually been using it. I, I had delusions of being a media critic, like, back in 2009. <laughs> so I recorded a bunch of, like, uh, um, reviews on television shows and movies and stuff, and I got rid of all that stuff when I started doing the work journaling. But because it was so simple, I could use it while uh, doing chores or commuting or whatever, and um, it's just one click and it records it. And the time limitation forced me to be concise, because I used to do, uh, before that, I, I failed a lot of journaling. <laughs> I used to do um, written journals, and i just ramble incoherently for like pages when I did those. So I found the time limit very effective. And organizing my thoughts so other people could understand them was good practice. Um, We've talked about this before, Rob. Like, like uh, a constraint becomes part of like um, it becomes a creative tool for you, right? Setting up an uh, an artificial constraint. Like, why does it have to be five minutes? It doesn't have to be, but because it's five minutes, it doesn't give you a chance. Like, it it really makes you and you correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, because I know when I was doing my audio booze, I messed around with it a little bit, and I pulled up both mine and Rob's accounts on the screen if people want to follow us and then nudge us into using it more. Um, but it made me have to sort of like figure out before I hit that record button, what am I going to talk about? What's the point of this mm -hmm. thing, right? It's not going to be, oh, uh, what else am I going to tell you? Uh, I ate a banana, uh, and I once heard that if you eat too many of them, you die. Uh, and then... I don't know, that's like half my booze, so... <laughs> <laughs> that is so not true, because I've listened to them, and it's, 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 you journal your day, but then there's always like, this happened, and this is what I think about it. This happened, and this is what I think about it. And here's the overall theme of the day kind of thing going on there, right? Um, Thank you. <laughs> but that, that five-minute constraint does like force a form of creativity onto the actual journaling and reflection, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you could be stubborn and be like, all right, part two, part three, part four, but it kind of makes you go enough already and decide what's important and what you should cover first. Yeah, that's true, because, like, if you use something like um, SoundCloud, which also has a really easy-to-use app, I don't think there's a time limit yeah. on those. Like, if it, it, but it, it's a, if you pay for the service, you have, like, unlimited data or unlimited storage, right? Something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I look at stuff on SoundCloud, but I don't journal with it. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. It's cool that that service is still around and that people are still getting something out of it. Um, hmm. I wonder, can you embed audio booze? I'm curious. Yeah, I don't. I think you can. And I, it looks like there's a, no, there's, there's a competitor called Yappy that I have not checked out yet and I'm curious about. So, I don't know. I mean, the, the space is still around. And, and certainly um, SoundCloud is, is uh, they seem to be booming. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people. Of people. Um, and it could be their heavy emphasis on music, but there's there are a lot of podcasts that are hosted through SoundCloud. Um, it's uh, it's anyway, it's it's great that they're that the options are out out there. But then Audioboo, it does seem like their hook has that you know is is attractive. You know, the, just the the short. Um, well, it's attractive, or for me, it's actually been daunting, because I'm like, I don't know if I could say something in five minutes. Hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger. Blah, oh, five minutes. <laughs> it's like a miracle when I actually pull something insightful off. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, I, but that's part of it too, right? Where all of a sudden you're yeah. like, that was, wow, that I captured this thought. I'm already happy I did it. And that's that's one of the hooks I think for and any kind of journaling. Um, it makes it and exciting it's, to do it's again. It's low risk. It's so low risk because it's only five minutes. And if you do a bad one, a you don't have to post it. But b it's like nobody's gonna go like, hey, 
I want my five minutes back <laughs> <You know? laughs> for, for the free thing that you provided me, right? So it feels it feels low risk, but but at the same time, I haven't used it in a long time. When was the last time I used it? It was, oh my gosh, it was like a couple of years ago in one of my classes. I think a kid started singing, and I just grabbed it real quick because it was weird how they all just like spontaneously broke into weird Al Yankovic singing. <laughs> Yeah, but you do so much audio journaling anyways, Jersey. Like, That's not true. only do you express your thoughts when you teach, but you do this show and other shows. That's true. That's true. My voice is out there enough. <laughs> 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 but but it, it, I see these things that I get excited. What are you saying, Rob? Well, okay. So I think there's there's two things that I that I want to want to explore. Um, let's let's talk a bit about the sharing aspect of it. But then, what about the private aspect? So. Um, so first, first the sharing. So, so Ashley, um, you you are publishing these audio booths. What, um, what, how does that improve or affect your practice of journaling? Um, well, like to be honest, the reason I have so many journaling avenues is some stuff I do keep private, like my gratitude journal is private, and the emergent task planners are private it and habit RPG. You only see my stuff if you're my friend. Mm. So the audio booths let me practice. Um, like I said, my professional, my, my semi-professional side, and uh, like I said earlier, my, my relatives and my friends and, uh, <laughs> yes, I see you, and other people that, um, like, like, like my work can follow that and keep up to what I'm doing without me having to be in like a hundred different chats a day telling all of them or typing it up. Um, and yeah, you know, Jersey's right that it is public and... I always listen to them before I post them. So usually if something, I say something really irrational, unfair, so biased even I see it, or embarrassing, I delete it before it goes up. <laughs> or the next day you can go back and delete it. It's not as um, easy. Someone can download it, but that's a huge hassle. People don't usually do that. That's that's really good. You know what? You nailed some interesting uh, in, uh, in, insight that I just, uh, in my paraphrasing, I, I, role-based journaling. It's almost like you have Is these. That, were those sense words? Were those nonsense? No, no, <laughs> totally not nonsense. Uh, like it's almost like um, based on the sort of uh, roles and relationships you have, or commitments, or like okay, my professional commitments versus my my family or private or what have you. Um, I think that's really interesting. Where you know it, it's it it could be worth having multiple journaling outfits outlets. That um, that aren't just about the functionality of the that uh, that journal of uh, am I doing self interviewing or the techniques or whatever it could be just this I'm journaling under this context right now this this is the role I'm focused on that's that's kind of cool I don't know yeah it, it, but how do you set up those those roles in an explicit manner right I mean I think that's a tough one that to, to well, wrap professional up. Personal. Do you like what are you saying Ashley I think we lost your audio Ashley oh um I don't think that you necessarily set out to do them explicitly oh did I oh man uh. <laughs> All right. we got you now okay. So, um, the um, okay. So perhaps. The, All right. Oh, here we go. So I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You're saying the explicit aspect of it uh, for the role oh, maybe that was that kind of emerged. Okay. Um, I actually like that idea. Yeah, we got some serious latency going on with the with the, the Google Plus app right now. Um, but Rob, you could take it just for a second while Ashley's uh, uh, buffering catches up. Yeah. Um, so let's see the uh, uh, wh however it started, and maybe it's not, maybe this sounds onerous, but like for me, I actually got excited about that aspect because it's it's almost like you're inherently um, tying. Uh, some particular area you want to journal about, which is a constraint, and then that ha could have an appropriate audience that you're or an audience you're interested in connecting with, right? So maybe you want to journal regarding your um, 
cartooning in one area and you're sculpting in another area or what have you, right? Or maybe it's, it's you know, this is my daddy journal and this is, or my mommy blog and this is my, you know, um, my, uh, um, my welding sheet metal to my car um, audio boo. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, it's just, yeah, it, that, that could be a, uh, I mean, so that, and then, uh, those are bad examples, but, but I could see, like, where you, it could be just, I don't want to share this personal of a thing and, and have this, this, this particular audio boo journal outlet, whatever, be everything I want to reflect on. Just a few mm-hmm. things. I, I think that's, a, I, I found that useful. I don't know if I've really conveyed that, but. Well, and I like what Ashley, like what both you and Ashley kind of pointed at is that it doesn't have to be something where you have to uh, set up all the boxes of categorization in the project at the outset. Lean into Art as a project sort of found where it belonged and what it was about through us doing it. Doing, gosh, this is one of like the, the sort of like the, uh, I don't know, is it not a mission statement, but it's, it's sort of a theme that we kind of keep coming back to is make the thing to discover what the thing needs to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think Ashley's back. Is she? <laughs> Ashley, you back? The uh, the Hangouts be having some troubles. Um, yeah. The Hangouts aren't the Hangouts aren't Ash. cooperating with us all that much tonight. Oh, we see her. She sees us. She's waving, but we have no audio from Ashley as of yet. Yep, not yet. Because I there was. There we go. To start. Exp- oh, are we back? Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we should wrap this one up. Can you we, we hear me now? We should wrap pretty soon. So I wanted to give you guys a chance for any other like shout outs to okay, different sorry, journaling my applications is really or um, reflection yeah. applications that you guys like to use or books that would be good. Yes, we sure you sure can. Let's have Ashley go first. Yes. As far as uh, any any extra resources you wanted to make sure we mentioned today. Uh, okay. Uh, or did you guys already journal talk about? Um, you guys have done a lot of good journal episodes. The, um, I find that for. Journaling, doing it physically, the gratitude journal, doing it physically in like a high quality journal helps motivate me. Um, even though you could do it in like a regular notebook. Uh, talk about the Renee Brown thing, or no? Mm. No, we didn't Jersey? actually. Um, but this is this is a great time. No, we did not. So, okay, what were your uh, thoughts yeah, on so that? Yeah, so I watched that um, yesterday. Um, I thought it was it was really interesting how she was talking about the vulnerability being essential to your sense of belonging, um, because that's said a lot in the art community, and and um, being authentic is also very. I thought it was really great that she sort of slash uh, spiritual. I feel like there is a limit to how, how it should be um, depending on text and uh, what's uh, either a popular or unpopular opinion depending on what circle you're in. Yeah, I think she does a really good job, especially in her book. I've I've enjoyed her TED talks and whatnot, and also I've I've recently, I'm like uh, super duper close to the end of her uh, her of the audiobook version of uh, Daring Greatly, and she pro- provides some interesting structure, like to to almost put that vulnerability in a context as far as anything from personal habits to relationships to um, you know, uh, professional arrangements. She's she really provides a lot of interesting you know ways to contextualize that. One thing that I, that I thought was uh, 
And so some of that you may find like, oh, I did, you may may or may not jive with her or whatever. But like her general message, I think just has uh, so a lot of. Um, she has a lot of informed perspective because what she's doing is uh, providing her experience and story to research that she has done. So this is this is both uh, both rigorous and. Um, reflective it's you know kind of combining it all into you know her her books and works um, so she does have her personal struggles and, and ups and ups and downs that you know get worked in a little bit but not even that deep but just just enough where you're like oh yeah okay she's she's not someone that is uh, you know a sage on the stage telling everyone exactly how to be and um, not having really you know been through something herself what have you right and uh, it just really humanizes the information. Hmm. The um, uh, a thing that I thought would, was was really handy that uh, I'm not going to do justice toward, but like um, one of the things I think we can get tied up in when we're doing the reflection and we're thinking of our tasks and thinking of our goals, it's easy to get uh, harshly judgmental, and that I think is a uh, that's a dangerous kind of place dangerous feedback loop that you could just really stoke by doing the journaling um, so uh, I think that I want to mention the book and, and mention her in general because if you don't have the, the time or funds for you know for for the book there's she has lots of great free videos as well um, and also some really fun manifestos to just go read uh, if you go check out her site um, but it's the uh, Avo avoiding a scarcity mindset and how she phrases it. And it's just this simple phrase that uh, whatever your goals are, whatever you want to get done in a given day, you are enough. Mm. The okay, so how, how is saying you are enough an answer to the scarcity mindset? I think I know where you're going with this, but just to be explicit about it, like what, what is your interpretation of that? Because what, what could be implied... If you reach the end of the day and not finishing what you intended to set forth and getting done, mm -hmm. like maybe you aren't rewarding yourself. Maybe you maybe you have gamified and, and used gameful you know approaches to um, managing your tasks and whatnot, and uh, and journaling itself or some outcome you expected to learn from journaling, and whatever you've done for that, it's it's important to. And this is super self-helpy and, and like way squishy territory and talk about I'm itchy. I th I might just fall to the ground scratching myself right now. <laughs> but like it, it's worth saying anyway that even though you may be striving for that kind of thing or goal, tasks, pile of accomplishment, whatever, your worth and you are different and separate than those intentions. And you stand alone from that. You are enough, regardless. You're saying that you have an intrinsic value. Yes. Yeah, which does sound incredibly self-helpy, but super duper. Yeah, super duper self-helpy. But I mean, as somebody who has spends a lot of time and effort defining himself by the work he does, you know that that's that that can come off as a fresh thought. <laughs> Same here, pal. Yeah, right there with you. And it, it's, it's fresh enough where, you know what, along with this journaling, you come up with di different insights. Not every one of them is going to, um, you know, be the most amazing thing that, that helps you, you know, fly a blimp or whatever. But, like, you're, you're going to be, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's a little tool to pick up. Yeah. Worth observing. So um, we'll we'll link to to Renee's work in the show notes as well. So that's um, daring greatly, and then Amy mm -hmm. McGonagall's book Reality Is Broken, which we talked about before. Who wrote Fifty Nine Seconds? The, oh, you you'll look yeah, that up. For the I, show I will uh, look that up in one moment, or yeah, while you're talking about something. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, like the sense of um, yeah, scarcity, shame, and vulnerability, uh, like. Allowing oneself to be vulnerable and not, not, not being unduly harsh with oneself out of a sense of scarcity, meaning that 
oh, today's over, one less chance I have to actually be the person I want to be kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I have it. It's, um, it's, mm-hmm. The book is uh, 59 Seconds by uh, Richard Wiseman. 59 Seconds by Richard Wiseman, which we'll link in the show notes as well at leanintoart.com. Um, as far as any other journaling tools and tips that I had, I don't have anything nearly as cool as what you guys brought to the table this time. Um, for me, it's just it's uh, it's just just general notebooks. I, I liked what Ashley said. Oh, and by the way, Ashley's not going to be coming back for the rest of the episode. She's. It turns out we didn't realize this. She's in a hotel. She's on a trip right now, and she was using hotel Wi-Fi, which <laughs> explains a lot. Um, why hotel Wi-Fi? Why you guys got to be like that? It blows it's, my mind. I don't know why it's such a. It's. I've never had great hotel Wi-Fi. No, it's like they, they act like it's it's mithril or something. It's like it's like this this enormously scarce in in, in super, my door. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like well, you can get like you know two um, one megabit the whole weekend. You know, it's like wow, really? It, it just should be something that just like with lights and like with water. It should just be there, and it, it shouldn't be this like l- glorious, luxurious amenity. Right, it's like you can get Wi-Fi you for the water too, <laughs> palatable water. Right. <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> Do you want your water to be potable or non-potable? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Would that? Would you like that mint on your pillow to be, you know, one that was just not eaten before, or one fresh out of the box? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Ashley won't be returning. But one of the things that I like that she said was um, having a really nice notebook. To like like creating this kind of like artifact of, uh, you know, like like there's like a power in the fact that okay, this is a nice thing. This is something I spent money on. This is something that like there's like a, an implication that there's. Uh, it's it's uh, it adds some symbols. It could make it more of a ritual. Maybe they're they're uh, talisman, right? Where this 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 journal will as you invest time in it and your you know skin cells and ink and all that stuff, it will. Um, you imbue it with more meaning, and uh, yeah. that that's that's something that's a huge advantage that that uh, physical media journaling has. Actually, yeah, and I mean I've tried doing it on my tablet, and I used uh, Papyrus, that that uh, note taking app that I absolutely love on Android, and it's got this great thing where you can have like an infinite page, so I just keep on scrolling, scrolling, adding more, scrolling, scrolling. You know what that means? It means I don't go back to look at it very often. Because it's a pain in the butt to look at those notes because I gotta go scroll, 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 scroll. Whereas like with a notebook, you just flip through. Also at Kids Read Comics this year, I don't know if you saw this, but Ruth Barshaw, Ruth McNally Barshaw of the Ellie McDoodle series, one of the things I noticed that she does is like wherever she was, sketchbook in hand, little one, little like mm-hmm. say like the size of like, you know, just like a index card kind of notebook. But mm-hmm. no, no matter what was happening, she was sketch noting everywhere. So yeah, I saw. I, I I got a little peek because I was curious because it was noticeable. It's like, wow, she is working on. She's sitting in a panel answering questions, and doodling. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that person's setting a high watermark. I need to take and a peek that, here. That that ties in more with the last episode we did talking about sketching and sketch noting. But it just it's it was like a, a signal to me that like there's never an opportunity for this in this woman's mind to grab what's happening around her and. I'm positive that she's going back and reflecting on those things after she's made the things. So, hundred percent. And I, I mean, I use the classic stack of note cards that I carry with me as far as physical media. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as digital media, um, I I'm really into the iOS ecosystem overall, and uh, you know, Mac ecosystem. So I, I use the app uh, day one on all my devices, and it syncs up through Dropbox. Mm. So that's um that's like my Super super journaly journal. <laughs> we didn't talk about that category yet. <laughs> oh, I, I I love that there are different categories. Uh, the super journaly journal is like the sort of like the canonical master journal. It is from which from w- into which all tributary journals feed. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, and it and it may be all. It also contains the most original anything that hits me journal journaling type things. Very cool. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I, I, I think I think we walked around this one pretty good, Rob. Uh, and, and Ashley. Yeah. 
yeah, and that was super awesome. I was, I was, it was great to have Ashley on the show. Um, you know, uh, bummer to uh, hotel Wi-Fi is everywhere, but but it worked long enough where we got to uh, we got to hang out for a while. That was cool. Yeah. I'm super glad of that. I'm super glad to have her on the show. And we definitely, I mean, I already said this to her in the chat when she was saying goodbye, but uh, we definitely need to have her back. Mm. Um, we yeah. will. So, okay, but but to give the proper shout-outs to Ashley, uh, do check out ashleyanap.com. Uh, and uh, she's control alt Lee on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, she's on Audioboo, and it's uh, audioboo.fm... Is it Ashley A. Nap? I'm checking right now. Nope, it's Control Alt Lee on Audioboo. Mm, right. D T R L A L T L E E. So audioboo.fm slash Control Alt Lee. That's where you mm -hmm. can follow her audioboos. And then do check out her Patreon because that sounds really intriguing. This this audiobook series, The Phony Potion Peddler's Plate, which is patreon.com slash Ashley A. Knapp. She's got the alliteration going on with the title. That 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 usually is half of the, the battle of winning over readers. Yeah, good title. So um right. Well well worth checking out. And actually her Twitch channel was cool too because it, it gives you a peek into her game development process. What's what's her channel? Um, Twitch.tv slash right. Ashley Knapp? Yeah. Uh, Ashley hey. Let's check. Yeah. Live on the air, Twitch.tv. No, channel not found. Let's try Control Alt Lee. It's, it's nope. Funny. Oh, it's, Ashley. Uh, I don't know. Uh, shoot. Well, we will look it up and, and be sure to have it in the in the show notes. Um, yeah. It's not coming up. And I might have to get a Twitch account now. Now I I did not realize that this thing could be used for other, you know, process videos. Let's test it out. But, uh, cool. Well, um, thanks again, Rob, for this awesome conversation. Thanks for doing all the prep on this one. And, uh, and uh, thanks to Ashley Knapp for hanging out with us. So uh, we will be back in two weeks. If that's too long to wait, you're like, oh, two sorry. weeks? What? Uh, you go to our Patreon page. We do shows in between the shows. We do this thing called Extra Lean where we have this casual conversation that always turns into a really fast, fascinating discussion. That's at patreon.com slash lean into art. And uh, there you can find a whole bunch of other stuff that we do. And it's all for free. But if you feel like this is worth something to you, you can financially support us and make this thing creatively sustainable. Right, Rob? Yeah, which is just, um, it, you know, it's super appreciated. Uh, you know, the, the kudos is an inexpensive and some could say almost free way. But you know what? You're still, it's not totally free. You're giving us some time and you're giving us... Your, your attention, which uh, we, we really appreciate as far as spreading the word. But then, of course, uh, if you want to uh, be a patron, that's also very appreciated. And we've got, we have a great outlet for you um, yeah, via the Patreon page, which, of course, gives you a little more content. And um, the uh, do, 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 uh, we also have uh, workshops. And uh, the, yep, the, that's, that's available at uh, leaningtoart.com slash workshop. So various ways to get into, you know, more content, you know, buy extra things and uh, feel wonderful where, with where you vote with your money and time. Did I, okay, so we're at the tail end, so I can, like, I can talk about anything right now. Um, mm -hmm. I did get to meet a couple leaners at the ALA conference, which was really cool. Got to meet people who... Uh, were fans of the show, and it was super nice to get to talk with them. And one of them was a uh, a writer who was like, eh, I'm kind of thinking about doing this podcasting thing. And I was like, oh, super cool. And so we got to talk for like, you know, 20 minutes about like the benefits that come out of doing it. And then the best part was when I was kind of going on about like, oh, these are all the benefits that I've got out of doing it. They're like, yeah, I know. That was a couple episodes ago when you guys were talking about making the extra thing and, and geeking out with intent. I was like, oh, wow, okay. You do know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I that's always it. flattered. Yeah. That's, that's super cool. That That's that's awesome to hear. Yeah, thanks for thanks for actually... Um, I love hearing from it, from it as well, but we Jersey and I have chatted uh, off mic how it seems like somehow... People um, walk up to me and and mention, hey, I've I've you know I check out I, I listen to the podcast and whatever and I love that I love hearing that but you know what gotta give give Jersey the high five too it's awesome oh yeah well I was the only not one not that I, I don't know why that is it's just it's a weird thing I I think it's you know I'm uh you know maybe I look bored I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's that hangdog expression, Rob. You just look like you need a high five. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Whatever. Anyway, silly anecdotes. Good but, way. To... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was nice to see that that people in all circles uh, do pay attention to this 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 fun little thing that we do called lead into art. So, and if you enjoy the thing, a great way to give us a a, a high five. If you can't meet us in person at conventions, let's go to iTunes. Give us a star review. You're watching this on YouTube. You give it a thumbs up. That helps more people find the show. You don't even have to write a review. You don't even have to say anything. Just give it however many stars you think it deserves, and that helps make it more visible to people who are searching for art and literature and design podcasts on the the, the primary vehicle or the primary index of such things. So it's a big help to us, just a simple little action, and then we appreciate everybody who does that. So with that, I will say, hey, Rob, awesome seeing you again. Talk to you in two weeks on Lean Into Art. It's always fun, Jersey. Love doing this. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, be reaching out and scheduling more guests, and there's always more to, uh, to think, though I don't necessarily believe in the overthinking anymore. No, me neither. Yeah, totally, man. You can't, get, you can't get tired of thinking. No way. All right, so until next time, everybody, I have been Jersey Drozd of LeanIntoArt.com and Jersey on Twitter. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of LeanIntoArt.com and Rob Stenzinger on Twitter. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at LeanIntoArt.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user LeanIntoArt. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening. All right. Killing the stream. Thanks, everybody, for watching and hanging out with us. Yes, thank you very much. Have a great day.